I'm like, nope, I take my boat out on the water and I eat bagels for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Thank God. Sean, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, Chris, are, are, are you recording already? Yeah, we're going. Uh, oh, oh, uh, I let's, yeah, let's get started then. Yeah. yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to the flip side. Uh, today we are gonna discuss uh, if we, how do I put this? If you have what it takes to compete. So it's kind of a weird topic, I guess, uh, cause tricking, you don't really compete that much technically. Like you go to gatherings and you kind of compete. Although now there is more of a competition scene that's starting to come out, which I've noticed, which is really cool by the Especially way. Especially after that Vegas gathering. Yes. Yeah, that really adrenaline started. put on. Um, so we're going to look at things that we've done that we've figured out are like good for us for competing and kind of share our experiences and go over stuff like that. Um, so one big thing that I have, uh, knowing if you're ready to compete or if you're able to compete, uh, partially is your skill level and your knowledge of like what you need to be doing and like what you can and cannot do and know where you stand. That is a pretty big thing in my opinion. It, it really helps going in and letting yourself calm down and like kind of get a little bit off of the, that edge from your nerves, especially when you're first competing. Cause like when you're first competing, you're like, I have no clue how this is going to go. Right. <laughs> and that's terrifying. So at what level in tricking do you think that you should have before you compete or do you, cause there are battles where there I've seen that there are people who can do very, very basic skills, like round off backflip, tornado, tornado, like hook, scoot, and that's it. Like very, very basic yeah. skills. And they can't combine them. They can't combo really. It's just one skill up to the other. And they're just really trying to land them. Okay. Do you think that's, so, do you think that's relevant? It's not really like a gymnastics routine, but gymnasts, they start competing very, very young with very, very basic skills. And yes. that's something else really interesting is I feel like a lot of gymnasts don't know how the number system works. Like they don't know how to score points. They just trust their coach to build them a proper routine and they don't really delve into that. Yeah. Some like I've worked with some of my kids so they can understand like how the routine works because like, I think that's in, rare though. Yeah. Cause like in case something happens, yes, the coach needs to know, but sometimes it's also helpful, especially if they're old enough to like truly understand like what is going on um that like oh if i fall or if i miss my back hip circle i need to get up and do that because it's a requirement within the routine mm, that yeah. i need to make it and i need to have a certain type of skill or oh i didn't feel right doing my back double full so i did a full instead okay well that downgrades to this level of a skill so now i need to pick that up maybe somewhere else that or, is really cool to be able to do that yeah, or like, hey, if you enjoy our content and you want to show some support, make sure you follow us on Spotify and Instagram. Our Instagram tag is the underscore flip underscore side underscore podcast. Just make sure to go on there. Just shout out like old episodes that you liked, anything about the new episodes. You can comment on any of them. We would really appreciate it. And if you do end up wanting to go a step further, just become a supporter. All you have to do is follow the link in the description in any of our episodes that we've published. And you can also go under the about section in our Spotify homepage. You can do as little as 99 cents a month. Any amount that you guys support us is going to help us build a better podcast and help build better trickers around the world. Yeah. Or like know that I'm not going to score as high on this routine or I'm going to be missing a special requirement. So that's going to affect things in the end. And like understanding how the routine composition works. Uh, and that's actually, actually the way that relates to tricking that I've done all quite a bit is I'll have a combo planned in my head. Like um, I was battling Ethan at uh, Tricktoberfest and I was doing a combo that I was planning on doing a G switch cork snapu at the end of. So I think it was like uh scoot gainer, scissor and Vergato backside 12 vanish nine hook TDR G switch cork snap. That's what I was going to do, but I didn't have enough space at the end. So I did a hook and then I was like, fuck, I'll just do a snapu. So I just did a snapu, no TDRG switch. Um, but Makes it was sense. like, it's the same idea. Whereas like he had previously done a cork snapu. So I was like, all right, well, I wanted to like answer back with a similar trick. So I yeah. did G switch. I was going to do G switch snapu because that's like 
kind of a level up, kind of the same thing. But I was like, all right, well, Snapu will have to do, you know? But, like, the fact that you can change it so quickly, it's the same idea. Like, you're swinging on the bars, and then you're all of a sudden like, shit, I need to make that up, so I'm going to do this. There was that one video that you showed me of that gymnast who repositioned their entire routine because they did a skill that they had at the end, and then they were like, I can't repeat it. So they did a different skill, and then they're like, well, I can't repeat that. So then they did a different one. So they redid, like, swapped everything around. So it was the Olympics – um it was the i don't remember his name uh, i think it was nikita nagorny from the russian team if i remember correctly he did he messed up on his one skill or like i said like he did it at the wrong time mm-hmm. so he had he just like on the fly and like you could tell that he like completely changed your routine because usually day one day two they're usually doing the same routine give or take maybe downgrading a little bit maybe upgrading it here and there but like the whole routine composition changed minus his strength skill and everybody was, and uh, an old buddy of mine that actually moved to the UK who did a whole commentary on, he's like, he literally, from the first skill on, was a completely different routine. <laughs> like it was. And that's just actually insane. Because especially because he he had to know the point systems and he had to know the requirements and he was like okay this is that okay this is that I've done this level I've done this level and like I'm sure that it was similar skills yes but still still it's still insane it was nuts and like having the ability to move things around where you want them like he was at the point that he did he was going to be missing a D level skill or something and he just like put it in somewhere else and he's like oh well if i do that then i need to do this and it's just like mind-boggling that he has that skill set to be able to even do that because that's like right actually insane yeah like, that is so crazy. so crazy so, so like that falls into the category of do you have what it takes to win in competition i think that that's very different that's than do, do you have what it takes to compete um, my thought is like, this is what I've heard people say before is they go, they say, uh, sometimes you're the nail and, uh, sometimes you're the nail. <laughs> so it's like, I've never heard that. yeah, it's so, that's what one of my coaches said. It's so funny. And it's like, the idea is like, you just need to expect that you're going to lose. You're not going to win every competition and especially right. most likely not your first. And if you go in there with confidence knowing you can win and knowing having a plan and knowing how to that is one thing but then you also need to know that you're going to lose if you go in there expecting to win every time you're just going to quit right away it's just like so go in there expecting to get your ass kicked it just makes things better in the long run but you take things away from it and you learn you don't just be like you know be like oh i lost and i guess that's it like if you go in there knowing you're going to, you're going to do some things right. You're going to do some things wrong, whether you win or lose. It just, yeah. that's not what matters. Like in, in the end, it's, it's how do you improve? That's always the answer. Yes, it is. And that's one big thing to take away from competing or even practicing half the time is like, you should be able to look at your failures as a learning experience and even your successes as a learning experience. Like, Oh, I, that felt really easy. What did I do differently? Or what felt right? Um, or, oh, I really could not complete this rotation during the skill. What, what was wrong? Like, how did I get to that point? Like break it down from the beginning and understanding like where it went wrong or in your case, like for MMA, like, oh, I threw this kick and it got blocked and they pinned me. What happened to lead up to that? And like, what happened when I threw the kick and like, what was I, uh, oh God, what is it called? They can pretty much tell that you're going to do it. Um, yeah, like why did they read my movement? And yeah, I think I think they... that that kind of thing comes down to it comes down to like, do I do this because I'm good at it, or do I do this because they're in a position yeah. where that's the best option? And that yeah. you know that's so relevant in tricking. Like, say you're doing a, like a pass. Like, do at this point, do I do a pass that I am good at, or do I do a pass that will directly respond to what my opponent did? Like. That's do like, you have the ability to do that in a competition? Those are just the things you need to work on, the things you need to like be good at. And even if you're not good at those types of things, it's just the thought processes that you need to yeah. know. Like if you know that you can think like that in a competition, then you know you're ready to compete just because it will make you more comfortable. You don't want to be in the competition scene, but like if you're battling and tricking, it's like you don't want to be there and be like, bruh, 
<laughs> I don't know what to do. Know what I'm doing. Every combo pass I do is just going to be the exact same. Or like there, I've seen so many battles where people just throw card dubs back and forth with each other. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> like, I don't know. This isn't a battle anymore. Yeah, this is like, are we just lining card dub? Like, I don't know. Like there was one time where there was a battle going on, and then someone else from the audience walks out onto the floor and does a pass, and everyone was like what's going on and then all of a sudden he's just part of the battle and then someone goes hey they're battling and he goes oh shit i didn't know <laughs> he just didn't know they were battling. oh that's rough <laughs> yeah he goes oh i thought they were just tricky and i didn't realize that it was a battle and that's that means you're doing something wrong if you don't realize it's a battle that's not on him that's probably on the people competing like i mean yes everyone was in a fucking circle sitting down around the floor and there was music playing and there was only two people on the floor it looks <laughs> so like a battle they should have noticed <laughs> they should have noticed but they like came out of the bathroom or something and it had just started i don't know but it's like but still like if you're not doing something to one up the opponent or you're not switching it up or you're just not giving off those like the battle energy it's just like you're not competing you know it's just it's the, you got to go in there ready to do something you know to some extent in it Oh, yeah. I so, like, another, sorry, continue. Go ahead. Go ahead. You want to finish that? No, I, it was going to be a different topic. So, you're good, man. Okay. Um, well, I just had a question for you. So, um, like, at what level do you think that your gymnasts are ready to compete? Because with the tricking, you can pretty much find anyone at any level. And I mean, there's even this cool thing that happened where it, it was like, you know, I thought it was cool. A lot of people thought it was like kind of odd, but like, um, a very beginner tricker battled Michael Guthrie at a trick different. And it was just this idea of inclusion, which I thought was like, it was pretty cool. It is like, really nice. Yeah. And the beginner tricker like had a few combos that they were able to do. Mike didn't like wreck him. He just kind of like, you know, like one upped him barely, did a lot of clean moves, he, like copied some of the moves. So like he yeah. was like copying the combos and it wasn't about winning. It was literally mm -hmm. just about inclusion. Yeah. And I thought that was really cool, but it's like, was he ready to battle Mike? No. Was he ready to battle in general? Maybe. Yes. You know, and, but so like, at what point do you think that your kids are like, are, that you say like, you should be competing, not doing this for like a hobby? Like, so, if you want to, you're ready. Like, at what point do you say, would you say that? I mean, usually, A, when they're on team. <laughs> <laughs> but, <Right. laughs> like I'm not gonna put them on team if they ain't ready. So um, what are the requirements to be on team? So usually we're looking for like very specific things, like um, or at least semi-specific things. They have decent flexibility. Uh, they have decent strength. They usually can, especially when they're younger and we're putting them on a bronze. Like they can make their pull over. They can make a back hip circle because I don't want to have to teach that once they join team because that it does take time out of me teaching the other kids like okay now i need to stand here while i'm spotting this and i shouldn't need to be standing here and spotting this i should be able to focus on other things to help you progress um but usually a lot of it also is they they stay engaged when you're giving them corrections and actually listening like that's more of like a coach's perspective thing of like if that kid can't listen to you and like stay focused long enough to actually take in what you're saying and try to apply it. And they're not just like goofing around all the time. That's usually a big indicator of like, if I want them to compete, because that means they can go to a competition and actually like focus on what they're doing at least to some degree. <laughs> cause that's that it, cause competitions are a lot different. There's 200, 300 people there. Sometimes. So in your head, if you and don't have like muscle everybody's memory. watching me, and like one thing that we tell them, especially when it's like their first competition, we're just like, no one's paying attention to you. Right. They're like, well, what do you mean? They're like, well, is it my, are like my parents watching? We're like, yeah, no, your parents are going to watch you. Your teammates are going to watch you. The other parents maybe, and your coaches and the judge, but all these other teams aren't going to be paying attention to you. Those right. parents aren't going to be paying attention to you. People are going to be paying attention to the ones that matter. So you'll be fine. And like, we know what to expect. We, we know what we're watching. Like, no one's going to get mad at you. No one's going to make you feel embarrassed. You just got to go out there and do your best. And like, yeah. that's it. That's all you need to focus on. And there's a lot of people that are like really hungry for like wanting to win and like yeah. be that person, which isn't a bad thing. It's like, to get to that top level, you kind of need that though. Because if you don't I have that, you don't get very far very quick. Yeah. 
and like it really will pull you down. But I mean, other things that we look for is when I'm explaining things, and I, I know I just said this, but can you just sit still and listen? And like, if you have a question, then ask the question. Yeah. Like there really isn't too much of stupid questions. Sometimes you can feel like you're over explaining things, but to someone who's new or someone who's like learning, it, it's a lot of things that they're trying to take in. So like, it is weird. Right. But like, no, it's, it, that's, that happens so much. I would be explaining a certain trick or a certain movement and people will be like, wait, so what do I do with my arm? I'm like, oh, of course, I should probably tell you that. Like, people yeah, are just like, like, do I just leave my arms on my side? Like, what are my arms? And like, it's just because it comes so naturally to someone who knows. I'm like, oh, I just didn't even think like, do I, should I have open hands, closed hands? Like, I was like, oh, I didn't even think of that either. Like, it's just like really small. Like, like, and I'm like, and don't do it with your tongue out. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like uh, that happens so much. I'm like, I thought that was obvious, but keep, please keep your tongue in your mouth because you, yeah, you don't want to accidentally bite that off. I, yeah. I've seen people almost do that. So no, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, but another thing for like knowing you're ready to compete, if you're able to do skills cleanly and well executed, usually that means you're ready to start actually like going against somebody, like, especially tricky. That's kind of hard because your very basic skills can be really clean, but if you can't combo, it just still kind of looks weird. But there could be other people still at that level that you can compete right. again. Where in gymnastics, it's not quite that way. Like you always have a series of things that you have to do. Yeah. But it, it's looking at it as, can I execute X amount of things well? Okay. If you can, you're probably ready to compete at a certain level. Maybe yeah. not a high level yet, but a level. Because like if you can't com- if you can't complete things well enough to say I feel confident doing this in front of people and they're not just gonna be like oh that looks dumb like yeah. mm, you might not be ready then especially I, if you're like all oh, you're worrying about right especially if it affects you I think I think I agree with you there I basically I, I think to summarize I think you're saying in tricking at least if you have consistent base level basics you can compete and then yeah. the mental side of that. I 100% agree. If you are there to learn from the experience and you're there, I think the biggest thing is if someone was like, dude, why did you compete? Or like, were you all right competing? Like, how did it go? Like, you lost really bad. Like, what would your response be? I think if you can respond with something along the lines of, oh yeah, but I learned all of these things. I was just doing it to learn. I knew I wasn't going to win. I know I'm not that good. Like, if you're competing, people are, I think there's this expectation that you're going to be very good at it. And I don't yeah. think that that's necessary. Also, no. you can't learn what it feels like and how to get better at the mental side of it, unless you're in that zone, you can try your best to recreate it, but it is so, so difficult. There's been so many times where I run through the combos in my head that I'm going to do before a battle. And then I'm in a battle and it just goes out the door. So many people say it and so many people think that's not going to happen. And it just does so bad. And then you, even if you have a combo, you're like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. And it's your first pass and you have it in your head and you're going faster than you normally go. You throw a cheat nine and you're supposed to do a 540 after it to like some fancy knee like exchange. And then instead you just do a hook. And you're like, why did I do that? Because you're going hundred miles an hour and your muscle memory kicked in. You like, and then you're like, oh, these people are all watching me. I have to go quick. There can't be weird pauses. There can't be awkward steps. And then you do an awkward step and you're like, now what do I do? Like now I lost my flow. Like all, there's so many things where it just feels awkward. It doesn't feel right. And you have to be able to like switch it up really quick. And the more I've done it, the more I've been able to be like, okay, do this instead. Where there was this one combo uh, that I was trying to throw that ended with like a snapu pop flash double B. And I ended up doing a TDR instead of a snapu. So I did that same step over and I just kind of like went into the T. I was like, now what? And then I just started doing G switches. And then I was like, all right, just end with the dub because I'm like in G switches. And then it was awesome. Yeah. And I was like, that was a really sweet combo actually. And like, that was one of my better passes. It just was not, but it wasn't part of the plan. But luckily I just didn't freak out when my body defaulted. I just was like, okay, fine. That's what we're doing. And then you regain control of your mental and you just execute. And, but you can't be able to do that. You can't just like that guy did, right? Where he like switched up his routine. He was able yeah. to do that on fly because he was comfortable and he was like able to calm his nerves and think it through and just, he's at the Olympics, dude. He's at the that Olympics and he's able to just be like- possible level was just like, oh yeah, I messed up. Well, 
I need to, he didn't, he didn't like stand there and take time to think. Cause you only get like one to two seconds in the corner. Right. That, so like he had to think of that on the fly of like, Oh, I need to do this. Oh, well now I need to do this instead because of X, Y, and Z. And like, I need to get this. I need to get like uh, another like combo pass. And like, I can't just do like a single skill here. Like, Oh, well, if I do that, then I need to do a single skill here instead. And like, I need to do this triple full here. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> and the like something we haven't even mentioned about that and that goes along with that mental side of, of the tricking is you can plan all your combos out, but by the time you're like a minute in, you cannot do the same combos. So yeah. you, for me, what I realized really quickly is that you need to have a list of like maybe three longer combos. And basically what I do is like all three longer combos kind of more or less planned out in my head but then i'll adjust them to re as a reaction to my opponent um and it's almost more like i have three combos but each trick follows the other trick but it's less about the combo and more about like it's more about like this like these three tricks go well together for me right now these three tricks go well together for me right now and i have maybe like four or five three trick combos but they're puzzle pieces that can kind of fit in front or behind each other however i want them to um like for example if someone does like a j step i'm not i i don't necessarily want to do a whole combo into say like a snap as a finisher or like something to split like i could but if someone does like say j step double cork i'm gonna do j step g switch times three to dub instead of like g9 g9 hook snap like i could but it just looks better if i respond and like dominate them in the aspect that yeah. they just did. And so like having something where you're saying like, oh, I have this combo, but this would be better right now. Having the ability to like pull from a toolbox on the fly, that's like the best. And and then you need to be able to dumb that down. So then they do like the J step double cork. And you're like, man, I'm way too gassed to do the only thing I would like be comfortable doing which would be like g switch double cork or g switch times three to double cork i'm way too tired to do that so instead um let me just do like a mini combo but i'll still end with the double cork so that i'm still in that zone so you do like tornado front sweep um cartwheel master scoot double cork like if you need to make it that small to put a cartwheel instead of an aerial or like something where you're still moving but like now you've humbled the double cork so it's something better you know it, that's true you can't you know just something is because you, you're gonna get so tired and if you end up having to do like if they do a double cork then maybe you do tornado tornado hook tdr cork d leg round you're like okay it's not a double cork but it's a comboed complex like hybrid cork variation so it's like it's something, you know, and you're going to be so tired. And maybe you take that one pass to like to chill out and then they are now tired from expending their energy sooner. So then at the end of the battle, you can like kind of, you know, put the exclamation marks on stuff and like, you know, still bust out the bigger things consistently. Yeah. It's just, how do you want to play it? But you're not going to know what your body's capable of. And you're not going to know what series of tricks are default to you until you're in that adrenalized state of like, yeah, holy is. shit, I'm tricking right now. And that's one thing is like, once you go to compete and you feel like you're ready to, that first competition is always going to feel like nerve wracking. That's the best part. I know. And it, it is so alive. I'm so excited. Like I've done the battles in tricking and the nerves you get are just out of this world. And I'm, and it's great, but I'm even more excited to compete in something like Muay Thai. I've done wrestling competitions before, and that's great. And I'm sure Jiu Jitsu is going to be awesome. But like, this is kind of weird to say, but like in Muay Thai, it's going to be so painful. Like I'm going to be getting striked against. Like I'm going to be getting elbows. I'm going to be getting kicked in the legs. I'm going to be kicked in the shins. I'm going to be taking body shots. But that it doesn't end like that. You just no. you continuously take hits for large amounts of time at a time, and it's it's brutal. But that's even more exciting to me because you're so alive and you're so much in the moment and there's so much like sensory information that's being taken in. I think that is just like amazing. I think that's so amazing. And I think that even no matter how uncomfortable you are doing that in any capacity is like, yeah. that's that like, is even if it's a small amount of time, like no, that's, that's going to be a memory burned into your head. And you're going to regret it if you don't do it. And like another thing of going into feeling like you're ready to compete, like you have to be 
like we said, you, you need a certain like almost like set of skills that you need to be able to execute well, but you also need to have at least a level of confidence that you know you can go in there, just give it your best and just go out that way. Because like you're like you said, like you're probably gonna fail. Like there's gonna be times where you fail and like things are gonna happen, which yeah, you're not up to your best, but like you still need to go in with confidence of some level that like I've trained for this. I can do this. Can you pull from like, what about the competitions you've done? Like, what have you felt or like anything that's happened where you're like, you know, just unique experiences that happened Um, for you while you were competing? I guess like a unique experience would be when I was at nationals. I think it was my first nationals. Was it my first now? I think it was my first or my second nationals. Um, When I qualified for vault finals, um, and I wasn't quite expecting, like, I always knew I was very strong on vault, but I wasn't, like, expecting to, like, place really high in the nation because, like, wow. high level for me, you know, it's a high level. And I'm like, well, like, am I that good? Like, is this going to happen? And, like, I was really feeling it. And I just, like, probably did one of the best vaults I probably ever did. And I was just like, wow, that felt, like, really good. And I went into finals, and I was like, you know, I earned my spot here. It's not like I just walked in and they're like, here you go. Come compete during the finals. Yeah. That's not how it works. Like I really gained that confidence of like, wow, no, I, I am really able to be here competing against these people who are probably at least no matter what at my level or better than I am. And I'm having to compete against them and like really give it my all and try to beat them and like that's not it's not something that you can just like snuff at like it it was crazy in my head that i had gotten there and i i realized at that point that i really wanted to like pursue it hard and like even when i was younger like i knew i wanted to pursue competing because like competing was fun and i really enjoyed it because like when you beat a medal it's like the best feeling when you win it See, just, that, that is something exciting that they did do is like they gave out belts. I wish that it was like more widely accepted or like, or that we could do something where everyone kind of agreed on it because they were like, oh, world's best tricker. And it was like, it was given to Mike, which is like, okay. But he like competed against like, was it Reggie again? I don't know. But it was like someone who was not in the, like not in the bracket for the best tricker. Conversation. Was right, like not everyone agreed who to fit, who to pit against each other. Like he beat someone who wasn't necessarily voted into the standing of best tricker, and then they gave him the best tricker title. And it's like, but can he battle Shosei, please? Like it just was, and then Shosei didn't get that. It was just, it, but he won like his mini thing, and it was like, why is it like such a weird system? And so I think that if everyone jumped on board, but I would love to see that. I would love to see medals, or even if it wasn't like this big grand thing, because that's the thing is like that's going to happen once a year, and not everyone can make it. So like, is that really fair to yeah, say like, that? You have to earn a spot then to be able to go. And right, just- or like maybe be like, oh, he won this competition and then you can get a medal. I think a medal is way better than a belt, in especially like for tricking and like gymnastics-based things. Like unless it's some international competition like Hooked where you're like, okay, everyone has the ability to go. Everyone has the ability to compete. Maybe it's some sort of bracket type system or like maybe it's invitation only, but it, it, in the least case, it feels less biased than that did. Um, but yeah, I would love to see that. Um, but yeah, you know, I bet it's like the best fucking feeling ever. Oh, it is. And like, <laughs> and I'll, I won't forget this either. And I hope that the judge that I have talked to will never forget if his name is Barry. <laughs> It was at one of my first competitions when I was like really little, so like starting competing. So I'm like six, seven, give or take. Okay. Finished my floor routine, probably. And I mean, it's still basic skills, but like whatever. But it was probably one of the cleaner floor routines that I had like ever done at that point. And I finished the routine. I salute to like land my last pass. And then I just like look over at my coach and I'm like, did I forget anything? And I, I audibly like out loud saying that like you're not allowed to do that really and they're just like they're like salute the judge yeah i'm just like oh okay 
So I walk over to the judge afterwards because I saw my score. I still got a good score. Like it wasn't like it was a problem. But you did but, get deducted for talking yeah, to your coach. Yeah. But I walked over to him afterwards, like after our rotation was done with floor. And I walked over to him and I just looked at him like, what did I do wrong? <laughs> He's yeah. like, you know, like technically I'm not allowed to talk to you. Like in between. <laughs> Like, I'm not allowed to go over these things. He's like, I'll tell you, but like, just so you know. And my coach looked at me, or my mom actually, because she was there. She was like, why did you go? I was like, I want to know what I did wrong. Yeah. So I could just like not do that next time. <laughs> That's so like, funny. Okay. So is that something that you do find out at the end of the competition? Do you can, tell you? The coaches can ask judges. Coaches are allowed to go to talk to judges. The, the gymnasts are not supposed to. Okay. Like, they can say hi. That's usually about it. And usually even if coaches are talking to judges in between things, it's not supposed to be a long conversation. Usually they don't want you to because they can like hold up competition and doing other stuff. So you're supposed to put like an inquiry in. Yeah. I put that in quotation marks, but that's actually what you're supposed to do. See, that's also very interesting because my first thought on that is that it would create like some sort of like if you have a friendship all of a sudden or like, oh, I really like that coach or like I really like that gymnast. Like if they came and talked to me, they showed like extra like care about their routine. Yeah, they like, show now that's that's a whole Yeah, thing. that sounds like a major issue. And it's almost like they should submit things in writing only. Um, you know, so that there's no like face to face communication yeah. during the competition. It's very interesting. And I would so, love to see more of that in, in tricking as well, because a lot of the judges, I feel like they're very um like they, they know the people you know, so well, and like, they're probably good friends with them. And then the other thing they do that live voting for shapes mag, it's great, but I would prefer, I'm still prefer the judge system over the live voting because then what happens is people definitely do just vote for their friends. <laughs> yeah, I know. Cause like, or like the, the well-known name happens, when the live voting happens and I don't know that it's going to be happening. And I'm like at work, I can't yeah. watch anything. And then I'm like, cool. But like, I, what if I wanted to vote on that? Cause like I knew Jeff was like there or I knew you were there. And I was like, what if I wanted to watch and like actually give my opinion? And like, then you can't because it closes within like five minutes or something like that. And it's like, yeah, it's so quick. That doesn't help anything, but like, I get it because they want it to be quick, which is usually how that's supposed to work. But I, I like that there's a judging panel or like some places I've started actually doing that judging panel because like we talked about it a long time ago of trying to come up with like a scoring system. Like, I don't know what they do exactly, but really having a judging panel is one really big step to doing that because they have to be unbiased and really giving just their critique on things and and like saying this was good this wasn't like and they have to find a middle ground on that and that's like you what would judges- be really cool that i just thought of is like so if they had some judges that watched some like watch the trickers with no filter and they watch the trickers and like whatever they can have, you know, whatever favoritism they want. Uh, like maybe yeah. that maybe they know them and they've seen their previous tricks. So they have expectations of some kind or something like that. And, or maybe the underdog comes in and has no name and that gives them some sort of little advantage. But then also I think it would be super cool if they wore those like suits that made like a, like um a 3d uh you know what i'm talking about like a, it just made like a 3d morpho thing yeah so i think it would be super cool if the judges if there was like a session of judges that saw somebody who was like like the people competing they were like hooked up with wires and it created like this 3d version that you couldn't see faces oh, j- is- just like a, a mannequin type thing doing yeah. the tricks and you could tell if the toes are pointed you could tell where the arms are and it was like mechanical like so a mechanical judge and then like a style judge and then maybe like um like uh like a crowd please judge like like are they playing to the crowd type of thing so like three yeah. separate judges but like in separate viewing places so that they're seeing a different that would be thing crazy. oh i just think that would be really cool way to do it and then like that way you'd have impartial judges and then you'd have like judges that like are seen the like the like the uh, crowd pleasing side and like or yeah. maybe people that do know you it'd just be really cool to have the different sides because then you can win different aspects you'd be like oh i won the mechanical section and then i won the style section but overall this is what the score was i think that would be super dope um we should definitely do another episode then i'm like doing like a judging panel or scoring because that 
that brings up so many interesting really okay yeah i would definitely love to do that um but so going into like knowing that you're ready to compete if um i can do one like little last thing um I, yeah i have a few things i still want to go over as well so when you compete so this is partially past the are you ready to compete it's now you are competing if you go to that first competition and you go through and you do it and you just think to yourself that wasn't fun this isn't something i want to do then don't anymore because like it, at that point it's just kind of fruitless for you like i don't see a point in doing that like if you really don't love doing it that way then don't like you don't have to because like it's not meant for everybody like someone could see that you're ready to compete like i've met many kids where i'm like they should be on team like they should they should be on some team somewhere doing this and they're just like but i don't want to it's like all right like whenever you're ready I'm glad to talk to you about it because like you definitely should be but that's my opinion like if, if someone's coming up to you and really asking you are you I'm like do you compete or like do you do this like professionally like that's usually a pretty good indicator that like you're good <laughs> not just like bad right like come on i mean i guess it's maybe different to like the average muggle but yeah but i think that, that i think that everybody should try it i think it's insane not to try it uh, oh, yeah. it's you don't it, know how well you're gonna do until you do it and you're not gonna know how much you enjoy it until you do it it's and even if there are parts of it that you hate the parts of it that you love can still be there. Even if you don't love it in the moment, you might love it after the fact. Like you, because yeah. this is like a really legit thing where like you can tell someone that you do martial arts and it's bullshit. But if you tell somebody that you like are a fighter, all of a sudden it's like a completely different air. Even if you don't like fighting that much, it's like, no, I actually use my skills in real life. And it's the same idea where it's like, where it's like, oh yeah, I compete tricky. Like I don't just do it. And it's just, you immediately go from like a hobbyist to like a competitor and like that different leap. Like maybe you just want that title. So then get the title and just compete every now and then. Like, you know, maybe that's enough motivation yeah. for you. And, but regardless, yeah, it's worth giving it a shot. But yeah, don't force yourself. If, if it's something fun you like to do, then just do it for fun. Um, yeah. There was a couple more things that I just wanted to say. Um Oh yeah. So that competition thing. So like, if you go and you're worried about um, how it feels like to lose, or you're worried about like your skill level, um, just like the overall nerves, what I love to say is I beat everybody who's not here. So like everyone who's not competing, yeah. I automatically beat them. And everyone who is like, for example, like, okay, I can, I can do a double cork in a battle or a double cork variation. Okay. So Everyone who can't, I also beat them. That's a yeah, shit ton of people you just beat. You know, like everyone in the lower bracket than me, I beat them. Everyone who didn't show up, I beat them. So I am at this guy and he might beat me, but that doesn't make me the loser. I still beat like 90% of the people, you know? Yeah. So like a very small fraction of people are better than you if you're simply competing, uh, whether you lose or not. No, that's and true. The other thing is I love to do this, creating mini goals inside of battles. That way you're competing against yourself and not the other person. So something that I've always wanted to do is like, I want to land a triple cork in a battle. I want to land a double back in a battle. I want to land a double, uh, a dub dub in a battle. Like certain things like that would be like, man, I just want to do it in a battle. Like it's like a personal achievement. And like something else that I did, like in my very first battle, I did my first cork snapu in a battle. I was like, it was my opening move. I was like, you know what? I'm probably going to lose. So I'm just going to send it. And I landed. Yeah, I'm just going to try. Like, what? <laughs> I was freaking out. It was crazy. So yeah, it was pretty awesome. And uh, just like that personal goal made it like, even if I lose, I bettered myself or like I am beating this like checklist. So it's yeah. like, that gives you something else to like focus on too, instead of, and when I was battling Ethan, I was so nervous. I didn't even look at what he was doing 90% of the time. Like he was doing, a, <laughs> he was, cause I can't compete at his level. It was just so happened that like, I was one of the better trickers and like everyone else was like 
you know, they're, they're like, like they're like they're like it's you or it's nobody. And I was like, I was like, all right, I guess let's do it. So uh, right. they're like, they're like you're pretty much the only one here who can like triple cork besides Ethan. So you know, let's send it. I was like, all right, let's send it. Yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> right. So you just uh, yeah, it was just like, but I just couldn't watch him because like he's that much better than me. I was like, I was like, I cannot watch you do your passes these are my checklist passes. These are the things I've warmed up. This is what I want to do. So I'm going to do it. And that way I just focused on myself and just was like, like I, almost like you're doing a personal performance. Like I'm yeah. on stage and I'm performing for these people. I'm just going to pretend he's not here though. And I'm just like, I'm just going <laughs> and oh. it makes it a lot easier. So yeah, those are things that you can like mental states that you, help you uh, get into the battle in. No, that's true. Cause like when we would go to competitions, like um, one checklist thing that we would do is am I going to go six for six this meet? Because mm. guys have six events, girls have four. So it'd be, am I going to, am I going to land all of my routines? Yeah. That's what we would say for six for six is like, I didn't fall or have a major mess up in my routine. Can I do that for all of my That's routines? what I want to see in tricking more. Did I battle and not fall once? Oh, please. Or like, if you're a lot better at it, then you can do something like, did I point my toes on all my kicks? Like yeah. just, just small wins like that, which is like, that's what's going to make you better. Yeah. Cause then like over time, they, they make everything else look better. Cause you're just like, Oh, if I'm able to do that now, I should be able to just do that all the time. And then right. you think about it more and you're like, Oh, well, if I start doing that more all the time, then I just don't have to think about it. And then I can make another goal. Like that's how you want to level up. Cause it makes sense. Exactly. So and it makes you ready to compete at a higher level because that's what it requires that makes a ton of sense and that's pretty much how to train in general like now you're training for a battle so it's how to do it so yeah train, train like you're competing exactly exactly and compete like you're training yes <laughs> exactly all right well anything else nope i hit all the buttons i wanted to all right perfect then we will see you guys next time see you guys at the competition don't forget to follow us on the underscore flip underscore side underscore podcast on Instagram. And C-H-R-I-S-P-Y underscore T-R-I-X. That's Crispy Tricks on Instagram. And I also have another YouTube channel, Tricks Fix, T-R-I-X space F-I-X for more tutorials and other things. And we'll see you guys next time.